Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an optimization problem. Optimization problems are very important in calculus and they're not too hard if you understand the idea. So we have a rectangle that was inscribed in the region between y equals x squared, y equals 5 fourths minus x and the x-axis in the first quadrant and we're trying to maximize the area of this rectangle. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to start by naming some of these coordinates. For example, let's call this x coordinate here A, and I want to call this B. Obviously, you are able to write B in terms of A, which I'm going to do later on. But let's go ahead and take a look at the y coordinate of this point, which I called uh, the x coordinate A. Since this is a point on the parabola and the equation for the parabola is y equals x squared, then the y coordinate of this point can be written as a squared. And notice that B is just another point whose y coordinate is also a squared, but it's not on the parabola, it's on the line given by y equals 5 fourths minus x. So let's go ahead and take a look at it that way. Well, since this point is on the line and the equation for the line is y equals 5 fourths minus x, so we can safely say that the y coordinate for this point is basically given by, so the x coordinate is b, and the y coordinate of that point is just going to be 5 fourths minus b, right? Forget about the parabola and forget about the a squared and all that. If you just had this line and the vertex of the rectangle, you would just name it that way. But notice that the y coordinates for these two points are the same. Why? Because we have a rectangle and the top of the rectangle is basically a segment that's parallel to the x-axis, right? So it should have a zero slope. So we can safely say that 5 fourths minus b is equal to a squared. 5 fourths minus b is equal to a squared. Great. Now, so we're going to be using that information in our calculations. But let's go ahead and write the area of this rectangle. Since we're trying to maximize the area of this rectangle, I think it would make sense if we just wrote the expression for the area. So what is the area of this rectangle? Let's call the area capital A. And then I can write it as base times height. What's the base? The base is B minus A for this rectangle. And you can write the height in two ways. You can write A squared or you can write 5 fourths minus B. It doesn't really matter. But since I'm going to be using A as my main variable and I'm going to write everything in terms of A, I'd like to stick with A. So I'm going to write the height for this rectangle as A squared. So that's the area of my rectangle. But let's go ahead and write this area in terms of A only because with optimization problems, you always want to stick with a single variable so that you can easily differentiate. So from here, I would like to isolate B and just subtract or just add B and subtract A squared. From here, B is going to be 5 fourths minus A squared. Now let's go ahead and substitute that here into our area expression and write the answer in terms of A only. So the area can be written as A squared times the quantity B minus A. B will be replaced with 5 fourths minus A squared and then minus A. So this is the expression basically that replaces B here and that's my area. Let's go ahead and distribute this because we want to be able to differentiate it and I don't really want to deal with the derivative of the product. So let's go ahead and write it as 5 fourths of A squared minus A to the fourth minus a cubed. So basically, this is the area of my rectangle in terms of a. So if you change the variable here, or if you change the value of a, obviously you're going to be getting different rectangles, right? With different base and different height. But that's the general idea. So I was able to write area as a function of a, which is a variable, obviously, right? And I want to know for which value of a my area will be maximized. So I want to maximize the area and the idea is if you're looking at the maximum point for a function, you basically want to be looking at where that function will have a horizontal tangent. In other words, if the function is going to increase and then decrease, then you're going to have a maximum value at that point. Okay, that's the whole idea. Of course, some functions have sharp corners and they can't, uh, you can't draw a tangent, but the idea remains the same. You have a function that increases and then decreases, then it just makes a maximum. Great. So let's go ahead and maximize this function by finding its critical points. And for that purpose, we are going to differentiate this function with respect to a. But instead of uh, not to get confused with dA over dA, 
I'm just going to write it as a prime because the only variable is a, so we know what to differentiate with respect to. Okay. So when you differentiate this thing, what happens? We're going to use the power rule. So what is the derivative of a squared? We're going to bring the 2 down, and that's going to be 2a, and the power will be reduced. Same thing goes for this. You're going to bring down the 4 and reduce the power by 1. It's going to be 4a cubed. For a cubed, it's going to be the same thing. Bring down the 3 and reduce the power by 1. It's going to be negative 3a squared. So that's the derivative of my area. And I want to set the derivative equal to 0. So I can tell where this function will change sign for the derivative. OK? Now, since this is a polynomial, obviously, it's not going to have any sharp corners. It's just going to be a smooth curve. And notice that this is a cubic equation, even though we can easily factor it. So let's go ahead and factor this expression. And I want to avoid some of the fractions here. So why don't we just go ahead and take out. And actually, I can kind of simplify this a little bit first. So let's go ahead and simplify this first. I can write it as 5 half of a minus 4. Actually, that should be an a squared. Uh, actually, no, that's an a. That was right. OK, so 5 halves, because we took the derivative, 5 halves of a minus 4a cubed minus 3a squared. Now, I'd like to factor this. Uh, so I want to take out negative 1 half of a. And when I do that, something interesting will happen. Uh, the a cubed will be positive, so I can write it as 8a cubed. Negative 3a squared is going to be a positive 6a squared. Uh, notice that I also took out an a, so this should be an a squared, this should be an a. Okay, let's fix that. And finally, I have a 5 halves of a, but that's just going to be a minus 5. So when you distribute the one, negative 1 half over this, you're going to get the same expression. Now, it's a lot easier to solve because I do have an a times a quadratic function. When you set the derivative equal to 0 again, you're going to notice that we get a couple solutions from here. For example, a equals 0 is a solution. But ob obviously, that's not going to give us the maximum area. Why? Because if you set a equal to 0, then your a is going to be right here, and the area is going to be 0. I mean, it's clear that for a equals 0, the area is 0, right? So that's not going to give you the maximum area. But what about the other two values? OK, let's go ahead and check those out. And uh, let's set the quadratic equation equal to 0. So that's going to be my next step. 8a squared plus 6a minus 5 is equal to 0. And then from here, you can use the quadratic formula. If you Or if you want to factor it, that's fine too. But I'll just use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And from here, we're getting a positive product because double negatives and divided by 2 times a. So let's see what this gives us. Uh, we have 4 times 8, which is 32. 32 times negative 5, negative 32 times negative 5, actually, is going to give us 160 positive, plus the 36 is going to give me positive 196, which happens to be 14 squared. So from here, we're getting the following. We either get negative 6 plus 14 divided by 16, because we get two solutions, or negative 6 minus 14 divided by 16. Now, negative 6 plus 14 is 8. 8 divided by 16 is equal to 1 half. So one of the solutions for this equation is going to be 1 half. The other one is going to be negative 20 over 16. If you divide everything by 4, you get negative 5 fourths. So we have two possible a values, and which one is going to give us what we want? Obviously, our a value is supposed to be positive because our rectangle is inscribed in the first quadrant. Notice that we're not going into the second quadrant or something like that. So A has to be positive, B has to be positive. So I don't even need to check the second derivative. Normally, if you're looking for uh, multiple values, then you would check with the second derivative or make a table to see where the maximum occurs. But in this case, I have no doubt that it's going to happen at A equals 1 half. And let's go ahead and explore what the area is going to become for A equals 1 half. So basically, area is maximized area is maximized at a equals 1 half. And let's go ahead and find out what the area is going to be. We had a function for the area, remember? And that function was given by a squared, right? It was a squared multiplied by the quantity 5 fourths minus a squared minus a. 
So I'm going to be using this expression or you can distribute and use it that way. That's fine too, it doesn't really matter. So from here we're gonna get 1 fourth multiplied by 5 fourths minus 1 fourth minus 1 half. If you subtract 5 fourths minus 1 fourth, that's gonna give you 4 fourths which is 1. 1 minus 1 half is gonna be 1 half. 1 half multiplied by 1 fourth is going to be 1 eighth. So the maximum area, the maximum area is going to be 1 eighth for this rectangle. And it's just going to occur at a equals 1 half. And from there, you can find the b value to be 1. So our rectangle is going to be kind of situated like that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.